Thank you for coming, Naomi. Oh, thank you so much for having me. So, how did you uh, first get approached about putting uh, The End of America to film? Because I did get to watch it, and I thought it was a rather excellent documentary, and it really laid out the ten steps towards uh, a tyrannical government. Thank you so much. Well, um, let's see. I got to know Avram Ludwig, who's a film producer, and he reached out to Annie Sundberg and Ricky Stern, who are very, very talented uh, directors who did the award-winning films um, The Devil Came on Horseback and The Trials of Daryl Hunt, which were, I think, nominated for Cat. One of them was nominated for an Academy Award, I believe. Anyway, prize-winning filmmakers. And they um, thought it was an important message. And to their great credit, they, in a very short time span, racing against the clock, um, put together this kind of amazing documentary based on my book, but adding many dimensions to the book that only film can do. Exactly. You know, this reaches a whole other audience, whereas, you know, not that many people read anymore. Obviously, you did a, a large media junket for the books. You, you did get national press attention, but I think this is really going to open up the message to the MTV crowd and the younger generation. And what's so really powerful about this film is that although it kind of, you know, is following you around in a lecture, the visuals are, are really there, the points are well made, and it's not so overwhelming you know it, it doesn't it doesn't go too far out of the box i mean everything you talk about is well documented and we're going to talk about that on the other side we're joined by naomi wolf the end of america it's the info warrior with jason burmas prisonplanet.tv infowars.com Jason Burmis, we're joined by Naomi Wolf, and we were just discussing uh, the new film, The End of America, an adaption of her novel. Like I said, it's a little over 60 minutes, and it's just so well done. I really hope this does bring a new audience into the light that, you know, governments throughout history are not only corrupt, but they seize on events and opportunities. And really, in the beginning of your picture, you show how the Nazis seized on the Reichstag fire to pass the Enabling Act and broaden their executive powers. That's correct. Um something that people who are familiar with my book uh, know, but, you know, new viewers of the movie may not know, is that I was startled to find so many strong par parallels between how the Nazis seized power in the early 30s and how the Bush administration um, and, you know, their legacy is not being dismantled yet, unfortunately, mm -hmm. set about to undermine uh, democracy in America. Um, and, you know, Step one in the 10 steps to fascism is to invoke a terrifying internal and external threat. And I do, you know, note that the Nazis uh, hyped the threat of this lone arsonist who set fire allegedly. Some historians think it was a, 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 a kind of a staged attack on the parliament um, and the way that the Bush administration hyped or um, fanned the flames of you know, actual attacks on the United States in order to generate a, a generalized sense of fear. Um, all would-be dictators do that. And, and why don't you talk about some of these, like, parallel documents, such as the Enabling Act, and in this country, you know, we had Patriot Acts 1 and 2, we had the Military Commissions Act, and mm -hmm. like you said, it doesn't seem like any of this is being dismantled uh, by this current administration. So what are these things that are still around? Well, Jason, you've asked the important question. I mean, I had hoped and prayed that Obama, a constitutional scholar, would um, reverse uh, this kind of nightmare infrastructure of a police state. But, you know, largely he's made cosmetic gestures. Um, I mean, it was a beautiful gesture to claim that he was closing Guantanamo in a year, but uh, it's not closed. And, you know, meanwhile, he's done, his Justice Department is claiming, you know, even stronger rights in the Bush administration to conceal um, evidence under the claim of state secrets. Um, he has claimed the right to uh, surveil citizens even more forcibly than the Bush administration claims to. And um, there's a bill, you guys can go on my Facebook page, um, there's a bill that's coming up that's going to give the executive the power to shut down the Internet uh, in, in the event of a, a national emergency. And, you know, the Patriot Act is still standing. There are eight you know, idealistic young Americans in Minnesota 
who protested at the Republican National Committee and who are being charged, you know, facing eight years in prison and $150,000 fines under the Minnesota Patriot Act, charged as terrorists for engaging mm-hmm. in First Amendment um, freedom, of, um, freedom of assembly. So, uh, you know, with very minimal gestures in the right direction, the basic infrastructure is still there, and um, it's going to take a grassroots movement of citizens to force Obama to dismantle the rest of it. And, you know, we don't have any time to waste. Well, I couldn't agree with you uh, more, and I'm actually very, very happy for you to talk about the Obama administration because in this film, you really do make the point that this transcends administrations and that any administration in the future could use these powers. And, you know, Olbermann seems to be coming around. He actually just reported what you just said, that not only are they basically keeping the Bush and Cheney doctrines, but they're expanding on their executive powers on wiretop, on surveillance, and like you said, it's a nice gesture to say that they're going to close down Guantanamo Bay, but that really doesn't mean anything because when they do move these people, and they haven't done so yet, they're just going to move them to other black sites for renditions. I mean, these things aren't going to end. Um, Jason, I'm mm-hmm. not sure what you said is correct. I'll have to check uh, my sources because I believe that um, they've closed down black sites. However, you are correct in that to my astonishment and horror, the Bush administration is arguing that they still have the right to hold, you know, anyone they claim as a quote-unquote enemy combatant um, mm. without uh, due process, which is, you know, the cornerstone of a police state. I mean, the there is no way to close democracy and crush, no, crush an open society without the executive or the leader claiming the right to hold a citizen indefinitely without the right to trial, which the founders knew was, you know, fundamental to a democracy. So I was shocked when I found that they're making this claim that they, they you know, want to be able to hold people indefinitely. Um, they're kind of masters at making gestures toward, um, toward the Constitution, but not budging, you know, this infrastructure very much at all. It does transcend political parties, and I'm very depressed to have to say that, because I worked very, very hard. I mean, one reason we, you know, fought so hard, Jason, to get this, you know, uh, movie out there before the election was we were really, I, I'm, a, you know, I have been an Obama partisan. We were mm-hmm. really seeing that with a mccain Palin win, you know, they were going to lock down the police state, um, and we were betting that Obama would push back on some of these things. Um, and and I'm, I'm, I'm appalled. that. Well, you know what? I shouldn't say I'm appalled. The founders were very wise people, and they knew and they said that any leader, any faction, any majority, any minority, if they seized excessive power, would abuse power. And that's why they set up this beautiful system of checks and balances that has eroded so much. Uh, because they recognize it's human nature to seize power. Um, so in a way, while I'm shocked that Obama has not really dismantled this infrastructure and is some way building on it, um, I shouldn't be so surprised because our founders, you know, more than 200 years ago said you need these checks and balances because people will grab power if they can. Absolutely. And, you know, you discussed that you have a uh, bill up on Facebook. Is this 1444 or is this a separate bill that's trying to shut down the Internet? Because I know 1444 introduced uh, some compulsory service things and mandatory service things, but I wasn't sure if it had anything specifically do, to do with the Internet. Is that a separate bill that they're trying to clamp down on the Internet? Uh, Jason, it, I imagine, you know, go. people can go to the Facebook page. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm 46, so I'm new at this technology. <laughs> I don't have the name of the bill or the number to Mm -hmm. hand, but if you go to my Facebook page, um, you'll you'll see it. Um, It gives the executive the power in an emergency to just close it down, to take control of it, Um, and it's it's very disturbing. Um, Mm -hmm. There there are other bills coming up that are very very disturbing. I understand that um, there's money being allocated to these. FEMA sites, which, you know, mm-hmm. have not been fully reported out, but are a distressing presence on the landscape. And the thing that bothers me most and that I'm most concerned about as a mother is um, the fact that the military has been deployed in the United States just before the November election. The 1st Brigade of the 3rd Infantry Division was redeployed by Bush from Iraq to the United States of America, and right after the election, they redeployed two more brigades, that's 3,700 warriors, to somewhere in the U.S. Um, And Obama is committing, uh, and not just Obama, you know, we're on track to have 20,000 military 
uh, serving in the United States by 2012. So what's happening is the people are being acculturated to being policed by the military. And there's evidence that the military was advising the police in Minneapolis, where you saw these extremely militaristic, very, very brutal assaults on citizens who are engaging in the right to protest. And I have to tell you, as a student of closing societies, um, when the military is sent to police civilians, um, it's over. I mean, that is the thing that, that citizens have to rally around. I think, and I think that's the most burning issue, is um, going back to the Posse Comitatus Act and getting the military back you know, out of civilian policing. Our founders kept us safe for 200 years from military policing because they knew from firsthand experience how dangerous it is. Uh, to have an oppress, uh, you know, to have uh, an army, even one's own army, um, policing civilians. The the National Guard reports to the people. The National Guard reports to governors, to us, um, and that's who has been policing America.